Boy, are you going to be happy you tuned in right now. One of the best giveaways we've ever done. Not one program, not two programs. How many programs are we giving away today, Justin? It's it's bigger than two. Three. It's three. We're giving away three programs today. I cut them off guard. Here they are. You ready for this? Maps Anabolic. Maps Performance. Maps Aesthetic. You can win all three for free if you do the following. In today's episode, at the end of the intro... I allude to a terrible idea that Adam had. Nobody knows what it is. I'll never tell anybody, but I'd love for you to guess. Guess what terrible idea Adam had that all of us are like, we can't do that. In the comments below in the first 24 hours, the closest person who gets to the idea uh, will win all three programs. But you have to leave the comment in the first 24 hours, and you also have to subscribe and turn on your notifications. You got to do all those things in order to win. Also, before we get to the show... Uh, don't forget this month in October, we've taken MAPS Anabolic and combined it with the No BS six pack formula and discounted it tremendously. So you can get both right now for $59 and 99 cents. That saves you over a hundred dollars, huge savings. If you want to sign up, cause you're a smart person, head over to mapsoctober.com. All right, here comes the show. Justin, I got to give you some props right now. Oh, finally. Yeah, I got, <laughs> shut no, up. Just yeah. No. You know what, dude? One of the most underrated uh, pieces of equipment, but for sure, or uh, is the sled. Oh, yeah, I dude. That. I've been trying to tell you guys. I know, dude. And I really never used it as part of my routine until I met you. And then more recently, I've used it more regularly. And it's underrated because I always thought of it as like an athletic tool. And I've always uh -huh. known the value of, of it for performance. I mean, Joe DeFranco's talked about this for years how it improves sprint speed and athletic performance. Mm -hmm. And, you you know, I'm not a big, you know, I'm not in the sports guy. I like to develop muscle and be strong. So I never really thought of it in terms of building muscle and, and that kind of stuff. Man, it's great for that. Oh, yeah. It's really it's good for, for that. building muscle. Yeah, you know what? The other thing is good, too, is uh, when it comes to aches and pains, not only is it, like feel like one of the safest things for mm -hmm. my joints. Mm -hmm. It actually makes my aches and pains go away. Yeah. That's what I noticed too. And I had clients that had a hard time squatting and we were kind of working through the rehab of that. Like I could always take them over to the sled and have them drive it forward. Just that concentric contraction, yes. you know, that continual contraction of them just moving. And it's such a functional movement that you're going to replicate in daily life. So it's like one of those things. It's just like has so many benefits and translates to so many things. Yeah. Well, is, the, is that because it's, so heavily focused on the concentric portion, there's I no eccentric so. portion, yeah. and, and is it the my th eccentric th portion of like the squat and things like that that really stress our joints more I, than anything I else? I think it's that. I also think that it's such a natural movement for people to walk or drive forward, so it requires maybe less skill. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, this is true. Uh, when I would have my kids work out, it would it, it would take a lot more coaching and training to teach them to do uh, like a lunge than it would be just to push the sled. That's mm -hmm. a good point. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, because it follows like the crawling patterns. Yes. Right? You learn yes. how to crawl really, really early. Bro, your calves are involved, everything. So the other day, it was like two weeks ago, I came in and you guys know when I have, uh, when my older kids are with me, I don't have a lot of time to work out and come in. Sometimes I have a very short period. Well, what, this particular morning I came in and I had to start at 8.30. So I literally had 15 minutes to work out my legs. I loaded the sled, Doug saw me, and I drove the shit out of it for like eight minutes. And that's mm -hmm. all I had to do. Mm -hmm. The next workout, I was stronger. Like yeah. an eight-minute sled workout, and I got stronger the next day. And then I noticed it helps. I've been working a lot on left to right balance and symmetry. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's helped balance out my strength on both sides uh, because of, I guess, the way Because you're split. It. Yeah. You're, so you're, you're driving one leg, and then you're split, and you're, you're driving the other leg. So you're alternating as you're going, and you're getting that like constant muscle tension the yes. entire time, which is you know, something that has its own value. You know, uh, Bodybuilders talk about this all the time in terms of like muscle tension and you know what kind of hypertrophy you know benefits we get from that Dude, and it's, it does all that. I think it's a bodybuilding I think it's a great bodybuilding tool I really do I've been it, totally it should be in every bodybuilding gym that's the thing I, I was actually I got excited when I started to see uh, some of these like grass strips and like some yeah. turf like uh, being you know included into gyms I think there needs to be more of that still yeah. like I, I don't think there's enough well according to our friend Eugene Tao is a complete waste of time for you to work on that but what oh <laughs> He posted the what? other day. I, I'm, by the way, I'm fucking on to you, guy. I know what you, I know what you're doing. <laughs> he's listening I, right now and he's writing notes. I, like, okay, I'm, I'm pretty this. sure. Yeah, because I know he listens to the show. I don't know how often he listens to the show, but he definitely picks up stuff or that or people are sharing specific things that we talk about that he talks differently about. Right. 
And he, he's a smart guy. So anytime, Very smart he, guy. yeah, anytime he does a post, uh, I don't disagree. You know, and people tag me all the time because I think they think that I disagree with what he's saying. Yeah. But w- I I don't like what he presents. Right. So he's presenting right now the latest post that he did. That's kind of <laughs> seems counter to what we talk about is addressing imbalances in the body. Oh, right. And the case that he makes, which is correct, is that we uh, we do not live in a symmetrical world. I mean, mm-hmm. if you're right-handed, you write with your right, you eat with your right. If you're left-handed, you, you, you wipe your yeah, you play world. the guitar one direction, yeah. you wipe your ass one. And so he did this little funny. Your liver's on one side of your body. Yes, yeah. yeah. So he did this little post, and he was basically kind of mocking that of just like you know trying to be perfectly balanced and symmetrical, and will never be perfectly balanced and symmetrical which is true yeah which is true all that is true now the problem i have with this statement okay and and presenting this information is it gives and you should see the comments yeah you're amazing so smart you're right you're right you're right you're right and like applauding him and just like so and literally i and there's and i click on some people because i'm just curious like, what do these people look like or what are they doing so like that you know and there's a good amount of them are bodybuilder fit, fit people probably not a big deal to them but then there's some of them that are like average people that was like oh my god i'm so glad i heard this because i was wasting my time trying to balance out my physique or work on these imbalances. And I just, what what I don't like about that is that that's incredibly common that you see this. You know, it's very common that I would get a client who just on the left side, they have this excessive pronation in their feet yep. that runs up the kinetic chain, causes knee and hip issues. And so low the message back. is you don't even need to address it. Right, and and it's that's- a waste of time. And I know he doesn't believe that. I right. know he, he, he would never, I know Eugene's a very good coach if he saw somebody squatting and they had excessive pronation on one side or the other, he would not address that. He wouldn't just keep moving through that. He's a smart enough coach to get that. But when you put out a message like that, that everybody, you know, there's you know, waste of time trying to become symmetrical because we don't we don't live in a symmetrical world and everybody has imbalances. You'll never be able to perfect them. That that message, I, I can't stand that. Yes. Message. Okay. So it's the so here's the key here. Uh, you'll never achieve perfect uh, symmetry, just like you'll never achieve the perfectly aesthetic physique. It's the pursuit of symmetry where you get all the value. So if you notice that one shoulder doesn't operate like the other shoulder when you're doing a, a bilateral exercise, when you notice one side hikes up, when you notice that one elbow flares out or one muscle, one side of your body is more developed or stronger than the other, pursuing balance, you're going to get tremendous uh, benefit from that. Now, if you obsess over perfection, yeah, of course you're screwed. That's always going to screw you if you obsess over everything being absolutely perfect. Yeah. But even if we back up, like... Symmetry is such an important thing for health and performance that they've identified that as one of the consistent metrics that people inherently use, maybe unconsciously, but they use to judge beauty and aesthetics. When you look at, when they're trying to find what makes a face attractive, one of the number one things is symmetry. Is symmetry. Yeah. And they've identified that, even though there's different cultural norms and all that stuff, symmetry tells us a lot about health. So is symmetry of movement, right? So if somebody's walking and one leg is a a quarter inch higher than the other, even if you don't necessarily notice it consciously, you will subconsciously notice that "Mm, something's not 100% 100 right. So it's the pursuit that makes uh, the big difference. And and look, bodybuilding was based on this. And I know bodybuilding is extreme now, but part of the things about bodybuilding is taking what we know to be aesthetic from nature. Of course, they exaggerate it. But one of the things is symmetry, right to left and then balance right top to bottom. Like yeah. we know what it looks like when a guy has a very uh, uh, developed upper body and, and I, skinny legs. I right? get yeah. I get the motivation that comes from that from Eugene. Uh, Lane has also been known to come out and talk about this. Who else do I know that addresses this, likes to come out with this 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 point of view? And I, and I know what they're doing because there's also, there's also a um, – a community of trainers that they use that as like a scare tactic always. It's all about, you know, perfect movement yeah. and everybody's been, they assess you and, oh my God, you're fucked up. This <laughs> is all messed up. Yeah. And if you don't hire me, you're going to die and I'm going to fix you. And <laughs> so there's a community too that's like around like just too much. Perfect, yeah, sales tactic. Too yeah. much, right? So I, and, and so I know that's kind of their, their, their message or their mission is to kind of like counter that. Mm-hmm. Like, and I appreciate Lane and Eugene for doing that. But I, you know, I, I just think, you know, our experiences with general population for two decades and we've had 
had quite a bit of people that we've seen in those two decades, and I, and I can I can have a very clear uh, idea of you know what I dealt with on the majority, and I think we all saw yeah. similar things, and that is most people are fucked up and have a lot of imbalances. Some that I can't fix, some that I'll never be able to fix, but some that I can address, and some that I can dramatically improve their life and their movement yeah. patterns by making them aware of something that they have exaggerated over years and years of not addressing, and it, that's only going to enhance and make their daily life yep. and their performance in the gym better yeah and I, I feel like you know that other message comes a lot from uh people within like the professional sports realm and like maybe even the coaches around that community because you are dealing with uh the biggest examples of imbalance like oh, yeah. you've ever seen and they've compensated their entire life and perfected that uh the way that they operate in terms of like being able to pull off these incredibly complex movements but uh it, it, as far as that goes like the longevity in their career and all these other things you got to consider like how do we Dude. now you know sort of work within those confines and, and pull them back e even a, just a fractional percentage closer to balance so that way it extends their career bro you're like the point you're making is so massive first of all athletes especially at the high level should never be used as an example of improvement yeah. in quality of life in terms of physical performance. <laughs> or for regular or people. Or damn near anything, to Almost. be honest. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you what. I trained. I'll never forget this. Uh, this is like five or six years of my career. I trained a senior who was a pitcher for high school who could throw some serious heat. He just had to work on how good he was with, with, his, uh, with his aim. And, I mean, you could visibly – because he pitched for m most of his life as a kid. You could visibly see the asymmetry – in his body because he always threw obviously with his right hand. Yeah. Now the body molds itself around what you do. There, you know, there are little literal remains of skeletons from medieval times and they know that they were long bowmen, yeah. long bowmen in medieval times. They were a crazy, uh, military, uh, you know, position. The, especially England dominated the world because they had these massive bows that required on a hundred and something pounds of, of pulling power, and they found these remains of these twisted spines and really, really thick right humerus, you know, arms, you know, bones and all that stuff because these people train for So your body will mold itself to what you do. Like if you hold your baby on one side, I used to get this with female clients, right, where I'd have a female client, she just, you know, she's three, her baby's three years old now, ready to start working out and can't figure out why their SI joint hurts and certain things. And which side do you carry your baby? Oh, I'm always on, you know, on the on the right side or whatever. Well, your your QL is shortened on that side. Everything's stronger or tighter in that particular position. Balancing that out made a tremendous improvement in their quality of life. So this is an important thing to pursue. But yeah, uh, is being pursuing perfect or obsessing with perfect a good thing? No, of course not. That's not, perfect. That's I just not good think for anything. I, I get very passionate about this subject along with the, the squatting one that we've kind of debated a bit. And it's because I can it, I can totally relate. Like the part of why I didn't address mobility stuff all through my 20s is because I love this message. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is, everybody is. Why? Why would I fucking waste my time Dude. doing some bullshit stretch? I just want to get buff and look good. And you know what I'm saying? And it's like everybody is in balance. So that's such a joke. And I mean, yeah. that was me. Like I totally subscribed to that. And actually working on that and working on my mobility and addressing all those imbalances has been one of the biggest game changers for, for my life, personally. So when I see that, I get fired up because I'm like, I know that you would have got me at 22. Even a 22-year-old trainer, okay, somewhat education experience, and I would have read a post like that from somebody who at that time, if I was only 22. Would have totally would, validated you. Yeah, you because I would recognize him as either a peer and authority in my yep. space. And either way he articulates his points, he's right and he's smart. And I would be like, oh, yeah, well, fuck that. I ain't wearing it out I, no more. I tell you what, you want to test this out yourself? Just train for a month unilaterally 100%. Try that yourself. Watch how you feel at the end of that month when you go back to your bilateral exercise. Yeah. If you're not blown away, uh, then, uh, then I don't know what to say. I think everybody would trip out just for four weeks. Four weeks of training unilaterally. Start with your weak side. Yeah. Let it dictate what the strong. That's the true side. test. That's yeah. it. Put 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 action plan. And you'll it. you'll trip out. Now speaking of uh, strong people and stuff, I want to give a shout out to the strong women deadlift kind of crew that we've been doing. I know we're selling shirts now, right? And we're donating some of the money. Yeah, yeah. This is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So I know every one of those shirts. So we have two different shirts that I know that choke in. She threw them up on the Mind Pump Media uh, thing yesterday. So and you can go to mindpumpstore.com. 
uh, money's being donated to uh, breast cancer awareness. So yeah. we did that this year. But that, I mean, it's so great watching yeah. these videos. Oh, it's been a fun campaign they, to watch yeah. all these women getting strong. And I love the the wide variety of women that are sending in videos. Yeah. There's beginners that are sending it in. Yeah. There's very, you could tell, very advanced. That was one woman that pulled some weight that I was like, okay, 300 something pounds. This, this is making me feel a little insecure. There was a pregnant woman that was deadlifting yeah. that was sending stuff in. And what a great message. Yeah. And it's so like positive and it's about performance, not looks, you know? Yeah. Super cool. I'm excited about that side of the business. We're trying to, Choki and I have been spending some time on that, like to really try and make that as a, a subcategory of what we're doing. And this was the beginning was to give back first, right? To do this whole strong one deadlift, to do yeah. the challenge every single month, give away just for the hell of it, just to create some good uh, energy around it. And then I think we're going to start to carve off like a, a separate like apparel line and business around that. And it's, it's going good. It's going good. I like what I it's see. It's a right great now. message. That was the idea, you know, and I, I just think that it's a good time for it right now with, with lifting heavy and deadlifting and talking about that with, with both men and women, but women in particular, I think it's just becoming really popular uh, for limp women to do movements like that really heavy. Well, I mean, I have a daughter. Okay. And, I know how media advertises to women. Uh, I know what women consume and purchase. And a lot of that message is centered around beauty and pretty and sexy. And I want, I would love for my daughter to see strong, be strong, be, you know, lift things that are heavy and feel physically strong, just kind of balance it out a little bit. Like, I, you know, I don't, of course that could get obsessive too. But um, what a great message. Yeah. I absolutely love it. And, and, and the proof in the pudding is the all the variety of women that are posting <laughs> and sending us videos. It's so cool. Speaking of messaging, yeah. uh, did you see Donald Trump is starting his Dude. new social media platform? Did we call it or well, what? Yeah, we kind of uh, knew this was going to happen. We huh? called it. Was it what does he call it? Truth uh, yeah, social? Tr part of it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everything else is fake. Yeah. So it's now, did you truth. know? I, and I don't know if you'd, maybe Doug could look this up for us. Uh, I didn't get a chance to do this. I read the article and I'm like, oh, I need to look at that. Uh, it's two companies that he's merging together, and both are already on Nasdaq. So they're already they're already trading. So it's not, so there's, there's no there's, way. Yeah, yeah. There's opportunity to buy stock in the in the companies. So he's merging two companies that are coming forming a, 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 an entity together. So it was one a media company and one's like focused on tech. The tech? Or something like that, I believe so. Okay. Yeah, I believe so. So Dude, maybe if you can find the article, it's it, it lists the two companies, and I do know that they are publicly traded, and it'd be really interesting to see where the ticker is at right now. Uh, and if it hasn't already, well, how long well, before it gets shut down? <laughs> well, dude, I tell you what, Let's I don't put care. a ticker on. I don't care where you stand with whether you like the guy or not. I really don't care. I do find it extremely strange, hypocritical, very interesting, and a bit conspiratorial, uh, just for lack of a better term. That the Taliban has an incredible Twitter presence. Yeah, and Donald Trump has been banned for life on yeah. Twitter. These are people that throw gay people oh, his, off of his, rooftops. His, his right. ban is for life? I didn't know that. He ain't never going back. Oh, yeah. it's a life That's ban. what they said. Wow. He got kicked off all social media. This is a, a, yeah, I knew that, but I thought maybe it was until bro, election. They have, they, have, they have crazy people on there, on, on these social media platforms that normally, and their, and their lives do some terrible shit, and they're still on them. So it's pretty crazy. Yeah. What does that say there? Is that his- Very uh, crazy. Yeah, Trump Media and Technology Group. Okay, so, so that's- Truth the, Social- and yep. then he has the, I think, the technology group, which I don't know exactly wow. what that uh, yes, encompasses. Yes, right there. It's a world, world, where it is, right there on NASDAQ Corporation. So yep. mm -hmm. Trump Media and Technology Group, Digital. DWAC. Oh, Digital the, World, uh, what is that? Acquisition Corp? Yes. Interesting. So, so now look at the But what else do they own? Take, uh, yeah, well, let's take a look. At, let's see what the ticker's at right now. I'm just curious. Boy, this is going to be, you know what, though? It's predictable. <sighs> because it's a market for media, it's predictable that, the media is going to tailor specifically to this audience. Of course, that, I, mean, I mean we said this. I mean it's it literally is it's we're all we're seeing right now is the birth of CNN and Fox News on television. We're just seeing it in the new the new medium. Like, right. I mean to me it's crazy that we still people still watch TV. All TV reports on now is Twitter and other social media platforms, which is so funny to now, me. It's like, oh, look who tweeted this at yeah. whatever time, you know? Oh, well, it's, it looks like it's been up for the last uh, year or so, uh, but it's at $29. Yeah, give me that 30-day run, Doug. Oh, of today, it's up 19 point uh, yeah, percent. So give me a th now, give me how a th many new like laws and uh, sort of uh, restrictions do you think are going to come out or when this launches? I don't know, dude. I see. I really, I really think that they're going to allow it to happen, and it just become 
Fox and CNN. We're going to have, you're going to have Instagram and then you're going to have Trump truth <laughs> social you, or whatever. You know? guys, how aggressive they're censoring. I just, I just picture it like all on assault of, of hackers, like basically trying to, uh, take oh, you down. think that, huh? Well, yeah. have you guys, have you, that's how aggressive it is out there. Right are you now. guys familiar with, I think it's Operation Mockingbird. Yep. I don't know. Maybe Doug, you can look that up. Yeah. The, where the CIA basically took over like all of, uh, Hollywood's like, uh, production like but, TV shows like they had control over the well, that yeah. wasn't a conspiracy that was proven no uh, what was proven it was, it was proven it was an operation where they would put in that. implants into media mm -hmm. to influence the public because media is so powerful bro you saw that oh but but they but they left yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah hey. okay we're out now. Like, oh yeah we, had we just our, controlled we had a fun. bunch of shit you guys well, caught us we're out of here like yeah, operation like, yeah. like operation like blue book yeah them. we researched uh, ufos we found nothing anyway dude come on <laughs> you do see the uh the joe joe rogan's going hard right now huh oh, dude what's oh, up I, uh we have a little side bet on the uh, outside of uh, mind pump on here of what if he's gonna get canceled or not oh, right dude. Oh, you feel yeah. like he's going to huh well he's under the wall of spotify i feel like he's been emboldened by that that's how you're starting to kind of hear his true opinions coming out yeah I, I like you know i i appreciate rogan he seems pretty fearless with his opinions which is pretty good well yeah, i saw well, they're attacking him you I saw mean, the fight the pfizer himself. one he did right health watch sponsored by pfizer anderson cooper 360 brought to you by pfizer abc news nightline brought to you by pfizer like, uh, brought to oh, you yeah. by Pfizer, brought to you by Pfizer, brought to you by Pfizer, brought to you by Pfizer, that Pfizer, 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 brought to you by Pfizer. <laughs> I haven't even watched. See, it's the thing. I like I like to go sometimes and just watch like mainstream TV just to kind of see what kind of like just Garbage. information people are absorbing. <laughs> yeah. So I know what to think when I'm talking to somebody, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, to, to see all those ads for Pfizer, I was like, why do they even need ads? They got the market cornered. <laughs> Who's like Moderna doesn't even have any advertisement anymore, dude, dude? Look at this. So some facts on Operation Mockingbird. So Operation Mockingbird indicates the CIA's involvement in the manipulation of the news published in the United States and across the world. Today, one can identify such manipulation with fake news. Operation Mockingbird commonly refers to the CIA's involvement in journalism during the 1970s. The CIA bribed students as well as established journalists and reporters to write a CIA version of the events. Mm. Uh, yeah, and then at the last sentence, it says the CIA admitted their manipulation of mainstream media in order to change the American people's mind. Wow, well, I mean, I, look, yeah, I'll tell you what. Between that and agent provocateurs and, and all that. I tell you what. Okay, this is now there's no conspiracy here, okay? What the trigger that got us into Vietnam, look up the Gulf of Tonkin, admitted that that was bullshit. Weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, mm -hmm. never found any. Uh, yeah. there's a, you know, those are just two, like you need an enemy examples. in order to like move your, uh, agenda forward. Yeah. And, and now this, this whistleblower quote unquote whistleblower for social media that came out, this woman, she's pushing for stronger federal oversight of all social media, which I smelled right away. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. Why is this whistleblower in front of Congress and getting all this media? Well, attention? what if that too is it's a Justin's point that you know she knows Trump is coming down the pipe with exactly. something like that, and it's really to set that up to get get the legal ability to go in there and do that. I didn't even think about that, so maybe you are right, bro. Maybe yeah. they, maybe they are gonna go <laughs> ham on it. Well, I just it, it's <laughs> like crazy. he's so dangerous, you know, like according to media. So it's of course like they're gonna come come at him with like everything they got. Otherwise, it's gonna be a real problem. Yeah. Yeah, you because know, well, he's gonna like try and undermine everything else on the news. Dude, I tell you yeah. what, this shit stresses me out. Yeah. You know, you know what? I'll tell you what though. Speaking of stress, you like that transition? Yeah, <laughs> I uh, do. I like appreciate. What those. did you guys think? Uh, because I think Ned hit it out of the park. Oh, the their, new cinnamon one. The, yeah. What's the name of that? Does it de-stress or de-stress? Okay. What'd you guys think about that? I loved it, but I only got the little sample. So I only got what is it? it had three samples in it or mm -hmm, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I already took it. I liked so, it. So CBG. And CBD. So CBG is the what they call a parent cannabinoid, and it's got really, it's got documented relaxing effects, not sleepy effects, but calming effects. Yeah. And then in there, they've included other things like ashwagandha, which is well documented, of course, to help with stress. So I've tested this out. So I had four bottles, and I've tested it out each time, mm -hmm. and then I wait about forty-five minutes to see if I notice anything. They have crushed it. They've completely knocked it out. Are of the you park. combining it with anything? Or are you Nothing. just doing it by itself? By itself, wow. and I notice a like I all of a sudden become. 
it's not sleepy. It's different than their sleep. Their sleep blend will knock me out. Like that's going to make me go. I can't well, drive. That's good. If I yeah. Care. Cause I, I was going to say like, cause it does calm me down, like, especially with like mellow or like even the regular CBD oil. Uh, but to, to have it not actually promote like a sleepy. No, their sleep formula. Like if I take that, helpful. I'm not going to drive after. Cause I'll get like, I'll, I'll make me groggy. Yeah. This right here. It's like, I had this like Zen. That's it. It was a Zen feeling. And I tried it four times. Do you know? I gave some to Jessica. Same thing. She knows the same thing. Do you know how much ashwagandha huh. is actually in it? I don't. I and, don't and know what do what is. I mean, I think you've talked about this before because I know we have a couple products that have ashwagandha, but I also feel like that's become like the, the one of the most popular things yeah. that people just throw in everything. And is it a dose that you actually would feel? And how much sal do I need to take in order for it to like really have it? The main component of what's causing you to feel what you're feeling from it is the CBG uh, ratio to CBD. The ashwagandha is in there in a efficacious dose, but it's as a support. So it's not the main player. Ashwagandha definitely has got great stress relief uh, aspects, but it's not acute. So when I take ashwagandha, I don't necessarily notice something right away, but if I take it over time, I notice it. The CBG that's in there, I do notice it. Like I said, 45 minutes later, and I'm like, Whoa. and I'm like, I feel like I just meditated. I, I took it before podcasting, so that's how I've used it. So every time I've done it, I've done it right before we did a show, and it's I definitely it gives you like you said that kind of chill. I don't feel sleepy from it. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and I'm excited to have my my because my parents are like totally sold on on the normal head, uh, excuse me, uh, hemp oil uh, mm -hmm. product. Mm -hmm. That they have, so I'm excited to have my, especially my dad, try it out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, you know, we were we were talking about social media platforms. You guys know which what social media platforms have the most in-app purchases that are not video <clears> games because <throat> video games trump ever all of them. But what social media platforms generate the most revenue in-app? Like, so in other words, when you're using that platform, buying buying stuff. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah. What do you think the top three are? I well, have not video games, huh? Yeah. Hmm. One of them I had no Is idea. Is it TikTok? No. Tender is number one. Wait, what? what yeah, are you buying in Tinder? Tinder? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I'll take the, I'm not going to upgrade the, like, the I don't quality know. of- uh, I don't know. Uh, I'll take the hand job. I don't know. <laughs> I had no, like, that one was like totally left field for me. Netflix, which also I thought, okay- I've you never have, bought anything while using Netflix. That's why I'm like confused. Maybe mm. because there's ads that hit you if you're watching from your phone and then you jump from there. So that's uh, included in that. Okay. And then YouTube is third. YouTube, YouTube is- YouTube makes sense. YouTube makes sense to me, right? Because all the ads and everything on that and they're three billion. But that, what surprised me were the two above them. Huh. So I was reading an article on Netflix about it, or I mean, excuse me, on YouTube and they had just surpassed the $3 billion mark of in-app purchases. And, it's, and it was, they said they were the third place on all social media platforms besides video games. Yeah. And I thought, well, what's one and what's above YouTube and the, Tinder and Netflix? Tinder? Yeah, what Tinder's, are you buying in Tinder? That's, I mean, that really has my well, wheels going. Well, what I think it is, okay, because what, what when I think up. of the things, what I think it is, is this. <laughs> Tinder and uh, Netflix are arguably the only two platforms I can think of that may, people may be spending more time on than YouTube, okay, mm -hmm. right up there with YouTube. And it's counting anything that gets thrown at you ad-wise and you jumping over from that. So I'm assuming that if you have a... Because do you need a subscription for Tinder, Andrew? I feel like you should know this better than anybody. Dude, he's been, he's, he's he's been, been, been in a committed yeah, but he's a young guy. He's a young guy. <laughs> yeah, Tinder is yeah. like... Do you, know the, do you know how Tinder works? I don't want to get you in trouble with your wife right now. He's like, well, my friend he's told yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, your profile's still up there, but... It's basically like uh, it's free, but you can subscribe to a gold subscription, which you pay monthly for, uh -huh. and you get more exposure. Okay. Uh, so they kind of promote your profile yes. a bit more. You can also buy there. coins I'm reading about right now. Coins? Yeah, coins. and the coins, let me see. They The coins will be a way for Tinder to monetize non-subscribers by allowing them to make ad hoc or one-time purchases. And then, of course, the subscriptions. Whoa, wait, like, okay, that's interesting. You're going through, like, uh, you may also want condoms. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, thanks. No, it's just extra features. And I'm not quite mm. sure what that means if you get more communication ability. I know. Isn't that interesting? And stuff like that. I had no idea. Oh, you know, you. I just thought of something, too, that I have to I try and admit anytime I'm probably wrong, right? So I admitted the being wrong about Jim Shark. Is this the, the robot day. thing? No, oh, I'm not. Oh, doing man, it. we're not quite. I'm all in it, on so. that. I'm all in on that. Until <laughs> until a robot's doing one of your guys' Bro, dishes. People I'm keep all in. sending me new stuff. There's yeah, this dude, handheld I thing that, that like washes everything. Stupid plastic thing. I saw some stuff. I'm getting I get hit all the time now, right? People love to send me that stuff and I just laugh when I see it. Um robots are no, gonna kill people before you they know, wash we, their dishes. We did that episode uh and we had um what's the guy's name right now? I can't think of the CEO of uh Tonal. 
Oh yeah, I can't think of his name right I, now. I uh, can't, but great guy. You see that they signed LeBron James. I did. Oh, that was a big deal. Huge yeah, deal. Yeah, you know what though? And there's biggest the, athlete. I mean, of course, a part of me that irritates it irritates me is because I know I'm wrong because because I because obviously they're going to go uh, right because that I mean you get the I name me a, a company or a business. This would be an interesting fact to find. Find me a, a, a company or business that signed with like the most famous athlete in the world and, didn't, or, and uh, failed. And, yeah. yeah, and failed. Right. right? right. I mean, that, whoever signed with Michael Jordan uh, did not. Fail. Right. Yeah. But the, you know what I think of right away is just like this. This motherfucker's never used a tonal in his life except for that <laughs> no. commercial. You're like, yeah. and you, all these kids are, are they be- want to be off, basketball you know, kids. He's all jacked, ready to go. Yeah, get like, out of here, freaking! He does not do that. Yeah. I, I know who his trainer is and that the stuff they do. There's no fucking tonal in their Dude, gym. That's, that's no, huge. I know. That is huge. the thing I liked about the CEO of Tonal was his stance on resistance training. He totally I, understands resistance he training. Did. It's he value. Does. Which I thought was tremendous. He wasn't like the typical like you know. No, I, I like him. I like his mission. I'm and I'm pro tonal by the way. And I know it don't sound like it. Uh, I don't think it's the answer. Um, I don't think it's something that um, I would use. I think if you're a, a, a avid gym goer, also probably not the greatest thing ever. But I do think it's going to introduce a lot of people to strength training yes, yes. that may or may not have ever gone down to a gym yep. and signed up at Gold's or 24 Hour Fitness, but would put this, that can afford it, right? Because it's definitely a different demographic we're going after here. $4,000 piece of equipment with a, what, a $30 or $50 a month yeah. subscription. It ain't cheap, you know? You can build a whole entire at-home gym mm-hmm. for cheaper than what that thing costs, but... You know, if you're the kind of engineer guy or whatever, and you're into techie stuff, and it- you know, it's funny if they can get, and this is a tough one, but if they can get, you know, their their image is more tech than fitness, people mm. will spend the three thousand dollars. People spend shit like that all the time on tech. Yeah, it's when you think of something as <clears throat> fitness that you won't. Like people are. They balk at twenty five dollars a month for a membership, right? But if you're telling them like it's the latest technology and it's offering all this other stuff. Then I could see how they might be able to do that because people will spend money. On They're going hand though. I can't imagine what. Maybe you can find the Doug. How much did LeBron get paid for Tonal? I'm oh, curious how much oh, got God. paid for that. Just, That's got to be big money, you dude. Better to get shell it out. Yeah. Got to be huge money to get somebody like yeah, or, that. Per, or or maybe a percentage. Or yeah, exactly. Maybe uh, do they even have the money? Sh- yeah, That's equity. A good point. I would wonder if they would do, give them equity. Yeah. Does it say, Doug? Uh, if I was LeBron, I'm not I'd seeing wanna... it, but it looks like the company's valued at 1.6 billion now. Mm. Uh, well, shit. oh wait, is that less? Wasn't it two billion when I made that post? I don't recall. I thought it was one billion. No, I thought. It, well, let me look. I actually wrote it in my post, and I know I I, I thought they took on like four hundred million, and then they were valued at two billion. Or was that a different company we we're talking about? Because remember, I did the. Uh, is it? Do you guys think it's overrated or underrated? Yeah. And got into that big old thing with with our buddy. Yeah, I could have sworn one. Oh, would you say it's at Doug? One point six. Oh, 1. 6. Sa- same, same valuation. Oh, so they just kept that same. Yeah, so oh. it's holding. It's, it's holding. not a public company, so I don't know. I mean, I don't even know if they have to disclose how much LeBron got paid. All oh, right, right. They, that could be a secret. It says he invests in at home fitness startup. So, oh, see, so oh, there so you go. He has an ownership interest. That makes sense. That yeah, makes perfect so it's in sense. his best interest to promote it, right? Yeah. It'd be the face. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, fitness and influencers and stuff, do, would you, do you guys hear the interview that I, uh, Ben Greenfield did with me? Where he, we had yeah, him? yeah. You mean Good old Ben. Say something right? You mean uh, you mean how Justin and I could uh, together maybe we'll yeah. put a coloring book together? <laughs> oh my god! Boom! Roasted. Good one, Ben. Good you know what? one. So in the for- in our private see forum, what he says when I beat him up the next time the, I see him. The people in our forum. <laughs> were, how do you like that, nerd? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Such a nerd thing to say. You know? like, uh, hey, I feel like if he was about to get be- beaten up, he'd push a button and like yeah. a machine would come out of his skin or something uh. weird. <laughs> I, uh, someone on our forum was like, "Man, you know, it was great interview, but like it was really awkward the way he was like trying to like poke fun and stuff." And I was trying to explain to them in the forum because Ben, we all know Ben. He's a good guy. He's a I great love, guy. I love Ben. Very good yeah. guy. Good dad. I nice still guy, would punch him. Honestly. I know. I mean, <laughs> but I'll hug him and then give him a noogie. Here's yeah. the thing. Yeah. You, yeah, I, I know you guys know. Remember this in high school, right? There was always that one guy in your group. Yeah. And you know, guys razz each other. That's what we do, right? We have a good time fucking with each other. But there's always that one guy that doesn't quite understand the intricacies of talking shit, and goes too far or <laughs> yeah. says something a little bit like. 
You know, like, oh, damn, bro, you're so fat. Ha, 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 ha. We all laugh. He's like, yeah, that's why your mom's an alcoholic. You know, and everybody's like, whoa. <laughs> oh, man. Like, you Whoa, went too God. far. Yeah, yeah. That, that's bam. Yeah, and he yeah. didn't know how to do it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. He was. He kept saying about me coming across the, on a boat and starting starting my pizza shop. Yeah. I'm like, come on, dude. That's a little too. <laughs> yeah. Come on, bro. What are you doing? This is how you get locked in your room and read books. You know? like, you, dude, yeah, why you, you don't get any well, social. You don't talk shit. Hey, speaking of that, I mean, you you got to wonder. Like, social awareness is such an important yeah. uh, attribute, right? Yeah. And I think that you know the, what we just went through the last two years or whatever like that. I wonder how many kids are going to, you know, Bro, we're, when you're, we're, we're, oh, we're yeah, raising a bunch of bins, you know no, what I'm saying? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, they're all gonna, they're all gonna, it's the pandemic. Hey, hey, cause talking, <laughs> yeah, the, the pandemic, <laughs> you know, talking shit online is different than talking uh, shit in real life. Yeah. Oh no. You know, it's, it, it's a different, it's a whole different ball. When that much everybody's going to put <laughs> lights in their pee hole and yeah. you know, wow. like coffee enemas. Listen, when you're, when that much of your brain is like tuned in one direction, something else is got to give, bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> like, he's a high-performance thinking machine, yeah. so he's not going to know the intricacies of social yeah, being interactions that, hey, yeah. hey, he Being that brilliant, to, it isn't dude. as good as you think yeah. it is. No, you know dude. He's got his thing down no? on the path. Like if, what, if, like, if I didn't know I'm Ben- glad I'm I, dumber, dude. Like, if I didn't know Ben yeah. and I met him, within five minutes, I would know yeah. right away, be like, he's a really smart, weird guy. Like, it would take yeah. me five minutes to figure that out. But yeah, yeah, I agree. It was hilarious as he was doing it. I'd laugh and you can hear my laughter that I'm like, oh, <laughs> stop. <laughs> stop doing that. Right. Yeah. Away. Right. Uh, anyway, dude. Yeah. So uh, I think we should uh, focus the camera in on your skin right now because uh, it's glowing again, bro. <laughs> Look how nice it looked. <laughs> right. So did you, you use the mask? We should yet? have just no, the, like a segment I, I, where like so, glitter comes like, down. Okay. So Caldera just came out. So I have the, the, the three thing, right? Are you using them all? I, those three I have been in for a while now, okay. But that's the the serum, the uh, face wash, and then the what's the other one called? I always forget the name. It's of what's, a cream of some sort. Don't act like you don't know. I know you fucking. I use it. <laughs> I just don't recall <laughs> the name. Play, playing dumb right now. It's I'm not moisturizer. Uh, moisturizer. That, there okay, that's there you right. go. Right. And it does work. It, yes. No, they, no, uh, hundred oh, amazing. And so they actually. Um, Email Katrina the other day about, hey, could I get a video of Adam doing the whole thing with the, the mask? And they said, mask? What mask? I don't have a mask. And, and I didn't realize they, they have now a new product. And so I got it, but I haven't used it yet. And I just don't know how I feel yet about it's that. It's not a peel off mask. Yeah, it's a, no, not peel off. So you put, so there's different kinds of masks. It's going to have like the whole like white. Yes, but yeah. then you rinse it off. Yeah. So I it's know. not the one that you like peel off. Well, I mean, like right. that. Just, yeah, but still, I got to walk around the house with the. Scare, yeah. your, scare yeah. your kid. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> put, put that with the cucumbers. Listen, I'm the, it's, I mean, it's I'm the guy look. who paints his toenails. I'm the guy who does like that weird. I mean, I'm the closest out of yeah. us who's probably most likely to do that. Yeah. But I'm not ready if I'm sure. I'm not sure if I'm ready to cross that. Yeah. I'm cool with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll Doug's do it. No hey, shame yeah. in your game, huh? No, uh, not at all. Well, uh, you, you, well, you're always working on making the face prettier. And you yeah, of course. You know, I can, I can, you Speaking can of that, tell. your skin is really clear right now. Yes. What do you attribute that to right now? What do, What do you think you've done different? Well, I um, diet is yeah. a large thing. I mean, I had a skin issue a couple of years back. Uh, Virgin's you, blood. You couldn't even have alcohol <laughs> okay. for a while, right? Enough oh with the blood gosh. talk. All right, guys. <laughs> there is no blood going down you're here. You're a vampire. We already started soup, talking about CIA. Okay, we gotta <laughs> calm down. What about stress? Do you do you think stress uh, up or down? I'm sure stress had something to do with it. I think it was mainly gut issues. Yeah, that's right. And then I went on to a kind of a antihistamine diet mm. for a long time. I took a lot of different Ayurvedic supplements. I was going to say, you saw an Ayurvedic uh, expert. Yeah. Right? What were the foods that they had you avoid? Well, histamine foods. I mean, that avocado, includes avocado, else? bananas, Canned spinach, fish. chocolate. Oh, yes, like sardine. Huh? Uh, you know, there's a lot of foods that have histamines that I had Avocados, no idea about. Right? Yeah, a lot of things I love. Banana. I didn't even uh, know. Say, well, go again. Sorry, I interrupted you. Banana, what else? Avoc spinach, spinach, avocado, uh, like any smoked type foods, uh, chocolate. Ooh, wine, dark alcohol. chocolate. Oh yeah, all the things I was Dang. pounding all the time. Oh wow, like uh, kombucha, right? I basically was drinking like two bottles of that a Dog day. The chocolate pounder. And here's the thing: yeah. all the things I thought were super healthy for me, it's a video. At some point, they're not healthy for you yeah, when you yeah. when you do too much of it. That's so a good I think point. I think moderation is always the key. So I had to cut out. Basically, all the things I loved for about a year. Uh, Doug, actually, I did. I, I did mean to ask you since you're already uh, talking. I, you were on the coaching uh, with Jason Phillips and the trainers yesterday, right? Yes. So, wh how did it go? It goes great. I mean, Jason's really good at 
driving the show. Oh, you had Jason this time? Not I had Chris? Jason, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I figured yeah, you I had know, Chris he probably time. made sure he was on because I needed the extra help. Oh, please. <laughs> I don't think that's no. the case at all. The thing about Jason is he's very he's very sharp guy. Yeah. And the way he breaks things down, I mean, he knows his stuff. Yeah. And uh, so we had a great conversation. Yesterday, we kind of talked about you know, what is it about Mind Pump and building a community that we've been so successful? Because we have a very strong community. Yeah. And uh, it was an interesting conversation. And for people that know, so what we do is once a week, one of us is on uh, with Jason Phillips or one of his partners and their, their coaching class for trainers and coaches. Yeah. So I'll get on or Doug will get on or Justin or Adam. And there's anywhere between, I don't know, 50, 100 or more people on there. And they're coaches and trainers, and they're asking us questions directly. We're covering a, a particular topic. And here's what I noticed, because I, I know we alternate, right? I noticed that 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 the trainers are, they seem to be growing each time I get on. The questions are changing, and people are progressing with their businesses. Have you guys noticed the same thing? Yeah. I, one of the, I mean, what I'm really enjoying about it is the feedback, right? So one of the things that off air we talked about well before we even decided to go into this venture with Jason was, I mean, obviously, if you've listened to the show for a long time, you've heard us come out and talk shit about masterminds and yeah. things like that. And not because you can't find one that has a value. It's just that it's like the new hustle that everybody's doing that. And this kind of originally, when we first talked about it, felt like, oh, is this going to be something like this? And the concern that all of us had was, listen, like, I don't want to do it. I don't want no part of it unless the people that are going through it are just blown away with value, that they feel that way. And the, when pricing it at $100 a month, which is not not one person in this room would charge that for them to talk to one of us for an hour, right? right? So it's under that price, and you get all four of us, plus Jason, plus his team, every single week talking on the Zoom, and you have the floor to ask whatever you want. We do. We, I end up, I, a lot of times I stay over and answer, yeah. like if Jason's got questions coming in, I'll be like, I got time, keep it going, you know, I'm fine. So I'll keep answering if they keep firing questions, and it's everything from business to being a, a, a great trainer, yeah, scaling, community, yeah. social media, like you name it, all all things that you would want to know on how to build a business as a personal You know what, trainer. And maybe to, to a fault, uh, one thing I noticed about Jason is he really wants to deliver to the point where I remember one time there was a young lady that asked the question and seemed like she kind of was struggling with taking the next step. Mm -hmm. And without going into too much detail, um, he's like, I will personally guarantee this and I will personally help you with this. If you make this choice, give it 30 days. And I mean, the guy manages so many people. Yeah. So I say to a fault because I don't know how much of his time. He, I mean, the guy lives and breathes this, Yeah. but I guess that's what it takes. I mean, that's what it takes in my opinion. If you're going to do something like that, that's what it takes for me to think this is a good thing. Yeah, he has a, a guarantee that he does it. I, I didn't know this until after we had started. We had launched the last time he was here when he told me that. Like he he does it way, and then, and he for sure checked me because I don't remember exactly how he structures. But if I remember correctly, it's half up front for the the year of coaching with him. He does not make you pay the other half until he gets your business up to ten thousand dollars a month. Yeah. Which, yeah, that is crazy to me. I mean, that would have like. Huh, you got me like yeah. if seven, that's, eight that's years ago if I was doing this yeah. on my own and I was like, somebody told me that they guarantee me to do that and I only got to come up with half up front and mm -hmm. then the other yeah. half is I'm due after I get to that. That's Which I think there's been a lot of examples of that within three months. You yeah. know, a lot of these guys, these people that have joined in have been able to accomplish that and it's really a cool thing. It's very tangible uh, and he manages it that way. Well, one yeah. of the, mo the most valuable things you could do as a trainer or a coach is have a good mentor. A hundred percent. I had a good mentor and that I can't even there's no words to explain the value that it brought me the problem is and whenever i tell coaches this they're like where do i find a good coach or mentor i'm in a gym with a bunch of people that i don't necessarily want to ment you know mentor me or whatever mm -hmm. i get that i was very fortunate you know we all started at 24 hour fitness during its heyday which i'm gonna this is true i remember who are you telling this you're, oh you're telling jordan shallow this the other day oh yeah we were with 24 Hour Fitness. I started in the late 90s. Uh, you got you started in the early 2000s. But right in that period, you are talking about people who turned that company into the industry leader at one point, into something that nobody, something that had never existed. They were before. the first company to ever reach a billion dollars in right. a fitness company. Right, and this is a true statement. Now, I can literally, I can list off my hand top producers who managed clubs back in the early 2000s, late 90s. Today. They're all doing different things. Not one of them isn't a millionaire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From what they learned, 
working in that business. Yeah. And it's all because we were so lucky to have those incredible mentors that we were surrounded by. And so having a mentor is really good. So I, I know I understand the promise of these like coaching master classes, but so many of them are so they're like like fake false promises, bullshit. They're preying on people. This is why we've stayed away from them so long. Uh, but so far, Jason, he delivers and he sacrifices a lot of his time and energy to deliver. You, you know what spurred that conversation was uh, we were actually talking about, you know, when we first met Shallow, which is, and we were talking about Schmarzo and Schlesinger yeah. and him. All they're, three of them were at Stanford. I know. How, you know, mm -hmm. looking back now and what they're all doing, right? You got, you got Schlesinger who is over in with the Phoenix, Phoenix Suns, Suns as yeah. their head strength and conditioning coach. You got... Jordan traveling the world, creating his own certification and, and having tremendous training uh, professional athletes in the NFL and stuff like that, doing all kinds of stuff. And then same thing with Smarzo. I know he's working yeah. with all kinds of pro athletes and oh, Olympic athletes and his like a uh, top end train facility. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's insane. It's crazy yeah. to think that they were all yeah. under the same roof working for, you know, that same. happens often. If uh, uh, they've done studies on this where there, there are particular environments that will create like tremendous success just because of the vibe course there's a combination of factors that come into play yeah. the right people but i can't think but about how we started and where we started and i could list names off of people who who were, came out of nothing came in started as sales counselors or front desk people right. got themselves up to fitness manager manager who today are the crush yeah. and it, they will there's all tell concentrated you concentrated pockets of greatness yes yes it's yeah. really really cool speaking of great companies um in controversy What's going on with Bel Campo? I heard that there's Ooh. some some Ooh. stuff going on. That so okay, I was reading the article this morning, and it sounds like it's still from that original, uh, you know, little thing that they had in what May it was May, I think mm -hmm. it was. Uh, and we talked about it on the podcast. Remember, we brought it up, and it w basically what it was was they sell all their meat as their meat, mm. and they were sourcing it from somewhere else. And part is that it's. Mm grass-fed, organic also, and supposedly, okay, if, if I'm getting my facts right from what I've read, they sourced it from another source and maybe not all those things were true as far as, mm. and so that, and I know she came out and did a whole uh, apology and it seemed like things were going to be fine and I actually haven't heard anything since then and then this article came, came out today that says they're shutting down. Now, here's what I what I think might be happening that happened in May. Okay. And it was handled. They, right. you know, I think they fired some people and because it was like, they, like, I think they were unaware or something like that was going on. They apologized, did a formal apology, moved on from that. And now they're shutting their restaurant down now for news articles or for getting, you know, clickbait. I think they might be tying their little, you know, mishap that happened in May to the fact that the restaurants just shutting down, and there's a lot of restaurants that are shutting oh, down, yeah. shutting down right Good now. Point. Mm. And so, what I'm wondering is hmm. maybe they are just getting shut down. But as a as a writer, a professional writer, you know the controversy they had five months ago. Uh, it's not a lie to say that they're they they, they dealt with that, and it makes for better like clickbait. So that's my speculation on this. I don't know. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. I mean, the, the percentage of restaurants shutting down because of all the shutdowns and COVID, yeah, through the roof. Yeah. And a, a high end, expensive. And I'll text I mean, her that is a dirty trick of like journalists to, to do that. I it mean, is because that's, it's the way they make money. I, I mean, will say this. I will say this though, man. If you if you hang your hat on a specific point in business, that could be your strength, but it could also be your biggest weakness. It's yeah. like if you're like a diehard vegan, and then it's discovered that you took a sip of milk or some shit, you're just you're you're destroyed, right? Yeah. yeah. They hung their hat on the quality and pasture raised and you know, farm to table and grass fed and grass finished. And then they had a supplier that didn't meet their standards. They said they weren't aware of and they apologized for. Yeah. But that, because it's like, that was their brand. Yeah. Very damaging. Yeah. You know, very, very damaging. Well, and then especially when you got, you know, people riding and jumping on it on top of that too. So I don't, I'll, I'll send her a text, right? She's, I think she's really, she seems at least the, all the encounters that I've had with, it's Anna, right? Anna, 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 something like that. Yeah. Uh, and every encounter I've had with her, she seems genuine and authentic and straightforward. They have so. a great reputation with our friends yeah and i place. and i really liked her you know i i and you know we but we have an, an a better relationship with butcher box i mean that's literally one of my favorite partners and brands yeah. that we work with they've been and this is not a commercial for butcher mm. box it's just we were offered 
a lot of money from Bel Campo to jump ship and, you know, said no because our loyalty towards Butcher Box and uh, I and so in her defense and what she's probably going through right now, it seems a little fishy to me. Like this is just what makes good news to yeah. try and well, pile on. I that. will say this too: if you're a meat company today, and you find there's a they find a chink in your in your armor, yeah. they're gonna jump oh, all gonna over pounce. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's interesting. I was I was totally gonna try and shoehorn this in with a Caldera commercial. Uh, <laughs> it totally failed miserably. Um, but uh, I was thinking about Caldera because uh, the definition of Caldera, which is basically like a crater uh, a, a, a volcano. So when, when a volcano like turns into, you know, a fertile crater, I'm wondering if that has anything to do with how they've like, you know, created the name. I'm trying to tie this into the Garden of Eden story that <laughs> I thought this is like this is my chance. Yeah. Yeah. This is my what? chance to bring this what up. What are you this talking about right now? Hey, so hey, let her keep going. This is good because you talked to me about this outside. I have earlier. no idea what you're talking okay, about. Okay, so there's a right. conspiracy. Well, not really it's a conspiracy. Not cons it's a theory, right? Yeah, okay, so I I've, I've told you guys. Yeah, put it on. Uh, long like I've I've told you guys about like I've always think back about even science brought this up about Pangea and like how you know the creation of the world like where we were in terms of like plate tectonics and yeah. all that and like we we're closer. Uh, so I've never heard this theory before. Like I've heard of like, you know, if the Garden of Eden was a real place, right? Like some people have attributed it to like being somewhere in Iraq and like Mesopotamia and like sort of like uh, it goes into, I don't know, the Red Sea, like where you have the Tigris and, and Euphrates right. and you know the Nile I've and all that, that kind of stuff. It's all right there. Uh, and, and so this guy, I think his name's Dan Ayo, uh, but uh, he has this sort of biblical uh, 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 philosophy, uh, this sort of theory that he has that he's promoted that uh, he's actually attributed it to this place in Tanzania, uh, which uh, which is really interesting because like there's all these like little little facts that he's he's sort of like placed together and dots that he's put together with this in terms of like a global catastrophe of a, a meteor that came that basically like was so impactful that it 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 exploded and, and pushed the continents like away so you see where the himalayas are like 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 india actually pushed like traumatically into you know that continent uh which then uh raised raised uh, those mountains up to where they yeah. are today right it's huge so he's saying he knows where eden was based off of certain features and certain ge yeah geological like characteristics he's all, there's that he's an apple tree back. and there's, <laughs> yeah. Some snakes. Yeah, there's some snakes yeah and well there, but there's there's <laughs> like yeah the, in, in hebrew like in in back like you can you can sort of go back and kind of trace a lot of these like facts in terms of like uh, like like the different tribes and like uh, there's more descriptions in other books too yeah. uh, describing Eden and so like it, it, it anyway the the interesting part is that like there's still tribes today uh, you know that talk about this being the birthplace of humanity. Interesting. Uh, and and hmm. so we and we've also heard science say that we you know in terms of like our our genetic blueprint like we've they trace it back to Africa, uh, and so in in Tanzania it's like. There's, I guess, there was this like big, huge volcano at one point in like um, this this certain area that's enclosed, uh, and it, it describes that like Eden was basically enclosed, and had all these animals and all this stuff there, and then the um, it was high enough to where the rivers actually started there and then um, uh, went outwards, and so it's like we didn't have all these like huge oceans at that point yet. It was lots of rivers, and so the world looked totally different. It was actually a bit smaller. Uh, and, and it rotated faster. There you go. Look at that. The, the well, this guy. one's saying Botswana. Mm. But oh, Botswana, huh? Yeah. yeah. He's I wrong. I heard that one. <laughs> yeah, that Tanzania. Okay. Hey, hey, it's one of those. Speaking of cool science, uh, maybe this will help you. This is Adam will like this because I know you're a big astrolog what? astrology guy. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I know that's a big He's a big Scorpio weird. guy. Yeah, Do you want to hear so, something weird? Yeah. yeah. So the Utah Health Department did some numbers, and this is very strange. Percent of people under certain zodiac signs that are vaccinated. There's a huge discrepancy between. Well, some... Oh, let's play. Let's play this. Okay. All right. So which don't tell. Don't tell us. <laughs> which signs do you think are the most vaccinated, and which which signs do you think are the least vaccinated? Definitely Virgo. Least uh, are I'm gonna say Leo, Leo, and and Scorpion. Okay. Scorpio. You, bro, you literally picked Leo, which is the most vaccinated, and Scorpio, which is the least. So you actually picked the two, the oh, two, yeah, two opposing, opposing. Hmm. bro. Seventy percent of Leos 
vaccinated. 46% of Scorpios vaccinated. What a huge difference. Now, uh, what about the other signs? Are they all kind of close? Aquarius is second in terms of vac- vaccination. And then it goes Aries, Sagittarius, Cancer, Taurus, Gemini, Le- Lib- uh, Libra, Pisces, Capricorn, Virgo. So I literally Scorpio. picked the two ends of the spectrum? Yeah. So you know what's funny. weird? Be- okay. Virgo, Aquarius, uh, Aries, Sagittarius, and Cancer, all above 55%. And then the lowest ones are Virgo and Scorpio, 50 and 46 but if you take the top and the bottom, that's a big ass discrepancy. Isn't that weird? Huh. <laughs> there must fun. be something to do with the, <laughs> the planets. There's something in the stars aligning. And where do you guys fall in there? Where you, you guys, I'm an Aquarius. You're, you guys are yeah, both Aquarius, both right? Yeah. Aquarius. You're yeah. both Aquarius. You Doug, you're a tell? Cancer. This is the Donnie. Oh, you know, yes, the, you know that's the best match for Scorpio, right? Oh, is it? That's why we work so well. Yeah, you guys. That's why I yell ah. at you the least? That's okay, yeah. That's <laughs> good. God, thank so God, you guys huh? Let's yeah. <laughs> so so you guys to, always to, to take, to take baths together <laughs> yes. yeah. and knock on the door. What the uh, fuck? Uh, I need the bathroom. I wish you nice. would agree with me more than Jesus. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. I am not going to throw you under the bus, but you had the worst idea of all time. <laughs> <laughs> we will never say what it was. It was so bad. But I tell you what, uh, if we ever, if, we, if this company ever sells for a billion dollars, I'll release it. That should yeah. be that should be what people speculate. Like I yeah. want, I want to hear people's. Nobody theories. would ever. Guess. Yeah. What do you think was Adam's idea? Nobody and I'm just gonna say right now, it was Adam's idea. It's not even it Adam's idea. Adam, Adam we'll never doing talk it. about it's it. No, right now. no. It's the unmentionable. Adam is doing it. This no, is, you're not. Yes, Don't yes. do it. <laughs> hey, real quick, before we get to the rest of the show, look, I know this is a fitness and health podcast, but part of being healthy is enjoying your life. It's quality of life. And sometimes alcohol is a part of it. Look, alcohol has been around for thousands of years. I enjoy the occasional glass of wine or glass of Jack Daniels on the rocks. Actually, that's my partner, Justin. He loves that. But one of the problems with alcohol is you feel like garbage the next day. It it makes your workouts feel like crap. It just sucks. You feel like crap. Well, anyway, there's a product called Z-Biotics that we believe has solved this problem. So Z-Biotics is the world's first and only patented uh, genetically modified probiotic supplement. So it's patented. Nobody else has this. Okay. So if you find other products that say they do this, they don't. This one is patented. It's bacteria that's been modified to produce compounds that break down the negative stuff that alcohol produces in the body. This stuff is crazy. It really works. We tested it out ourselves. We actually videotaped it. We went hard on the alcohol. The next day we came in and podcasted when normally I'd be in bed for three days. Try this stuff out. If you're a fitness fanatic who enjoys the occasional glass of wine or alcohol, but you hate the way it makes you feel the next day, instead, try Z-Biotics, drink it, and then drink your alcohol, and then let us know how you feel. It'll blow you away. Go check them out. Head over to zbiotics.com. That's Z-B-I-O-T-I-C-S.com forward slash mind pump. You can use the code mindpump10. That's mindpump10 for 10% off. Again, I can't stress this enough. This stuff really, really works. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first question is from Georgie RX. What are the top three training techniques for building muscle? Oh, top three most important things you should do to build muscle. Yeah, I think by technique, what do you think? What do you mean? Well, I get. I mean, it's just say the top three factors, I guess, okay. uh, for building muscle. I, the number one, and this one is just easy for me to, is to to come up with is just get strong. I think at some point. Just lifting more weight isn't necessarily important, especially when you come advanced because there's a limit and then become, you know, you also start to get this kind of risk versus reward uh, ratio that starts to tilt more towards risk. But early on, when I, I was lucky as a kid that I got, had very brief mentoring from some strength athletes and they literally told me, if you get strong, you, the muscle will follow. If you can squat, you know, twice your body weight, you're going to have muscular legs. If you could bench your body weight, you'll see a difference in your shoulders, arms, and chest. So number one, like when it comes to building muscle, because muscle does, um, it contracts. And if it's stronger, the odds that you're building muscle are yeah. quite high. So that's to be the first one. I read this question and I was thinking, well, along those lines of strength, but I was thinking about building a stable structure, right? So having having the foundation of, uh, you know, you being in good alignment, having uh, uh, you know, getting closer to good posture and having uh, your body just in a position where, you know, we could add this kind of stress to then work from there and like build on. So uh, to be able to, um, you, you know, focus on that specifically first. So now we can really ramp up uh, the amount of intensity and load uh, and demand uh, and change the environment 
uh, around, uh, you know, what our body needs to uh, work on. It's that's what then we can build and kind of go forward and build muscle. I would have to say progress, understanding progressive overload and uh, specifically the ability to scale volume over time. Um, I think very few people. Volume is closely connected to muscle too. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that very few people actually track the amount of volume that they consistently. And I think just naturally we all kind of fall or go, gravitate towards homeostasis and this kind of natural amount of volume that you always train. So maybe you have some good weeks and then you dip down a little bit, some good weeks again, and then you dip down a little bit over the course of three to six months, you're pretty much kind of right. hitting the same amount of volume. And if you actually just really paid attention and tracked, you know, the amount of volume and then just incrementally, just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more over time, I think you would notice tremendous difference in muscle. For me personally, that was uh, one of the biggest uh, shifts in my own programming when I started, to, and when I had to, right? When you're competing and now there's something on the line, um, I, I had to improve and build muscle after one show after another. Also, I'm not going to win, right? I'm, so, you know, and I had to do that. And when I did that, it made me, it really opened my eyes about my own pitfalls or my own like habits of kind of like form. So I, I think that a lot of people just do that. We gravitate towards the things we like. You have some good weeks where you train really hard and then you have weeks where you back off naturally. And when you look at it, uh, from like a bird's eye view and calculate it a lot, it's like, oh, wow, I pretty much always average about this much and simply being able to just know how to scale volume, I think is totally. tremendous. I, mm -hmm. I want to add one more. I know that we said three, but I'll add one more, which is uh, eating in a calorie surplus and then eating adequate oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, protein. Feeding the muscle. For most people, it's not for all because some people have digestive issues in relation to what I'm talking about. But for most people, eating a high protein diet as long as your workout programming is good and you're getting good sleep, eating a, a high protein diet has profound muscle building of uh, you know effects in comparison to let's say eating what the RDA says you should eat in terms of protein. And then a calorie surplus. Like if you want to add new active tissue to your body, your body needs building blocks for that. And if it's not provided those building blocks, it's gonna be very hard. You can send all the great muscle building signaling that you want. It just can't happen. It's like having instructions to build a house and you have the workers there ready to go and there's no bricks and there's no wood and there's no nails. And so they're left there saying, we want to build, but we can't. We don't have the building blocks. So I know they said three, but I wanted to throw that in there. And I think that those the ones that we listed are, I mean, Justin, what you said about having a, stall, a solid foundation and base. You know why that's important? Because I'm sure some people listening are like, ah, just go work out and you'll build yeah. muscle. If you don't have a solid base, you're going to, at some point, you're going to, early probably, you'll hit a wall. Mm -hmm. And then you're screwed. Injury, imbalance, your CNS is going to identify that you can't get stronger because it doesn't feel very stable. This is why good coaches always start with that. That's always the place that you start. You're never going to reach your full potential. Right, right. And I think that's, yeah, that's really just why I wanted to address that is just like to, to be able to uh, have that focus and, and intention. Uh, first thing, like you're going to reap the benefits later with mm -hmm. building muscle. Next question is from Vane West 4. How much water should you drink daily? Is a gallon really necessary? Yeah. The gallon number is kind of arbitrary. I don't want to say totally because there's some some stuff to back it, but it's kind of arbitrary. That was promoted by the, I guess, the muscle building community. But I will say this about water, okay? I had no idea as a young trainer the impact that optimal hydration versus minimal hydration had on the body. Like most people are not, quote unquote dehydrated. I hate when they use that word like, oh, you need more water because you're dehydrated. Well, not really. You've got enough water to be okay. But then there's a level that's more optimal. And what you notice is your skin changes. Joint pain often gets affected. Energy. Energy goes up. This is a big one. This one was this one really tripped me out. I had clients where I you know luckily I worked with a a a health practitioner that was very wellness focused at one point. This is before I was really into wellness. And I would hear her tell her clients this over and over again. And then I'd hear the clients come in and say, oh my gosh, I've got way more energy because I'm drinking more water. And I remember the first couple times I heard it, it was like, yeah, it's probably something else. Yeah, it's probably whatever. After about the fifth or sixth person, I said, I wonder if there's something to this. Let me pay attention to water intake with my clients. And I would do things like have them get a container of water where they could measure it 
and we would measure out, you know, between half a gallon to a gallon, depending on the person and their size. And I'd say, okay, I want you to make sure to drink four of these every single day. So now the person's aware and they would come back and say the same thing. I have more energy. Mm -hmm. I feel so much better. My, my, my elbow pain feels a lot better. No more mental fog. This has a huge, this optimal hydration has a huge impact on all that stuff. I noticed for the pumps when I worked at, I mean, here's the deal, carbs, uh, you know, pre-workout supplements, Arganine, citrulline. I mean, you name it. I've tried them all. Nothing gave me better pumps than just having a lot of water or adequate water or optimized water intake uh, before my workout. So this has a, this has a pretty big impact. I'm glad you set the table like that because I actually I get really annoyed by the trainers that that talk shit about this because this is one of those things very similar to the conversation we had earlier in this podcast where. Generally speaking, it's pretty damn good advice. Yeah. But you have some of these nerds that want to be, that's not true. And based off of their lean body mass, their activity level, right, there should right. be this many ounces based off. And it's like, dude, you obviously haven't trained that many people before because ain't nobody sitting down and calculating that all out. And very few people even keep track of how many glasses they do in the day either. It's much easier to give a client a very basic goal that were, or ha even have them like I like to do, carry this gallon around or half gallon and you have to drink it, go through two. It's it, And you're not going to drown drinking one gallon of water. So it's a good goal. Uh, if you come a little bit under this, it's going to be a huge difference. No, it's not. But in my experience, almost every client ever trained didn't drink enough water. Mm -hmm. And when we started drinking more water, we noticed these things. We noticed skin. We noticed hair. We noticed these things start to get better. Also, like I even noticed with clients, like uh, the achiness in, in their joints and feeling tight. Like I noticed that it like lubricated their like their their ability to move better. Yeah. Like it yeah. saw things like that start to go away. So, and then you talk about pumps. There's lots of benefits to it. And then there's this side in the fitness space that loves to take like this old kind of old adage of drink a gallon of water and then they want to shit all over it because the science doesn't support exactly that. It's like, dude, what you're doing is you're you're gonna tell you're gonna tell a, a majority of the masses who aren't drinking enough water, oh, it's not a big deal because this whole drinking a gallon is just this made up number, right. so I'm not gonna yeah. worry about it. Yeah, the number is arbitrary, but the focus on it is really important. Yeah. And, and to be able to be purposeful, like throughout your day of seeking out water, like we just know all those benefits that we've been listing off. It, it, it's really those are substantial benefits uh, that you're gonna receive from just like intentionally trying to. Increase Increase the amount of water that you're consuming every day. And so to have some kind of a goal. So if you can figure that out, like you said, even if it's a half gallon yeah. or, or the gallon, whatever the marker is, you know, you should be like constantly thinking that in the back of your mind. It's it's when you're not thinking about it, now all of a sudden things start to decline. And guess what? It, you know, this is an important part of training. Yeah, you know how much uh it affects cravings and hunger for some people? Yeah, that too. Because they're not drinking enough water. You know, I would say if you're the kind of average person and you're working out and you're kind of getting into it. Half a gallon is a nice place to start. If you eat a lot of protein, you're a fitness fanatic, you carry a lot of muscle, then probably more towards a gallon. It, now, those are, again, those are general numbers. Yeah, I mean, I totally, I mean, obviously, talking to a 115 pound woman versus a 260 pound, you know, man. Of course, there's difference for mm -hmm. RDA type stuff, right? But here's the deal. One gallon is just not a bad... I mean, m one gallon is going to cover most people. Is it a little more than uh, some people are going to eat? Yeah, but there, are you going to drown from having, you know, a half a gallon too much? No. No. So it's not... To me, it's 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 good advice. It's not something you should get freaked out about if you barely miss your one gallon. But I think it's a, it's a good generic target. You want to know what's, what else is funny? Do you know how many times digestive issues, especially constipation, is solved by drinking more water? Sure. Literally. Mm -hmm. Constipate. Like, I, I've had clients where this was – because I had someone who did gut health in my studio. And they would work with my clients along with me. And I do the training and they do the other stuff. And I, they would tell me afterwards, you know, what was the – well, you know, what's the recommendation? I say, well – I'm just going to start drinking more water. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but you've had, you know, your constipation issues have been with you for years. I know, but they want me to drink more water. All right, let's see what happens. And it was like 30% of the times, like three out of 10 people that solved their constipation issue. And I remember being blown away by it. So there's, remember there's, there's adequate and there's optimal, just like with protein. You know, if you have about 60 grams of protein a day, you're going to be okay. You're not going to die. Is that optimal for building muscle and performance? For most people, no. For most people, it's much more than that. Same thing with water. Yeah. There's you're you're probably not drinking too little to where you know shit's gonna go wrong. 
but then there's optimal in which you'll notice some some benefits. Next question is from Rui Marquez Insta. Is a week without training beneficial or will I lose muscle? Yeah, well, it depends who I'm talking to. You know, if, if you're like every other week you miss, yeah, you'll, you're probably <laughs> not going to be okay. If you're consistent with your training, losing a week is not a big deal. In fact, there was a study that we've talked about now a couple times where they took people, they took two groups of people, one side trained every single week, the other group did three weeks on, one week off, three weeks on, one week off. At the end of the study, there were no significant differences between the two groups in terms of muscle mass uh, or strength, which is incredible. You're talking about one, every three weeks, someone takes a week off versus always working out. Now, I do think there are other benefits to being consistent, so I do want to be clear. Moving is just good for you, whether it builds more muscle or not. There's mental health benefits to it. There's the discipline aspect of it where it's probably better to try to be consistent than to miss you know, time. So I'm not saying that they're equal in all aspects, but the question is, will I lose muscle? No, if you're consistent and you and you miss a week, you're not going to lose any muscle. If you do, you'll gain it right back very quickly. And in many cases, I think you'll come back stronger with a little bit more muscle. I, I remember when we just, I mean, it wasn't that long ago when we read that study. I thought that was extremely fascinating. I would have never guessed that. I wouldn't have guessed that uh, the week off every third week uh, would actually result in the same amount of muscle as somebody who trained every single day yeah. for that, you know, what was it? I think it was three month period or whatever. Yeah, it was, it was. Like, it was like sixteen weeks or something. Yeah, like it was. It was. A, it was a long. It was a pretty long study, and for them to miss that much time, I thought I would. I would have thought there would have been at least a little bit of a decline, but this, this it showed that they were the same. I thought that was really fascinating. And I guess I mean what, the way you said it's perfect. It's if you're somebody who is inconsistent, that's the only way I'd be careful about giving this advice to. If it's a client who. I haven't even been able to, to to streak three months in a row of training consistently. Then I'm probably going to advise them to not miss as much as they yeah. can because they're already constantly missing. But if you're the fitness fanatic and you're the person who loves to work out and you rarely miss, uh, yeah, not only will the week not hurt you, many times it will actually end up benefiting you. Totally. Next question is from Veggie Lifts. Are knee sleeves necessary for powerlifting? <laughs> necessary. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's Definitely. a, if you, there's a difference. if you want to look serious. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So there's a difference between knee sleeves and knee wraps. So I want to first, I want to, you know, make sure we, we discern the difference, right? So knee wraps are very tight mm -hmm. and create a tremendous amount of pressure and sp there's springiness in the knee wraps and stability in them. And you'll get, you'll add weight to the bar because the wraps are so tight and because when you put them on, if you put on powerlifting knee wraps right, it's hard to bend your knee when right. you have them on. You can't really sit down with just body weight. No, it's, it's so it's like adding a, a little bit of a spring to especially the bottom portion of the squat. So we're not talking about that. We're talking about knee wraps. And knee wraps are kind of tight and they go around the knee. Do they add, you know, like strength to your 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 knee? Not really, but why can people lift more with them? We had an interview with Jordan Shallow the other day that hasn't aired or maybe we'll air when we air this episode, but he talked about the different ways that the brain perceives signals. Mm -hmm. Pain is one of them. Pressure is another one, and pressure is faster than pain. And my theory now is when you wear a sleeve, and they say it warms up the joints, that's why they don't hurt. I think what's happening is the brain is perceiving the pressure of the knee sleeve, mm -hmm. and, it's, and you're not perceiving the pain as much. So I wear the knee sleeves, now my knees feel looser, and I feel like I can squat without warming up as much. I think that's right. probably plus, what's Plus it provides the feedback mechanism back that there's a bit of more stability yeah. uh, within that, that joint itself. And if that is a conscious psychological barrier for you going into a squat, um, you know, that's something immediately there's going to be a performance uh, loss in, in terms of if I'm, if I'm dropping down in position, but I'm very conscious that my knees, you know, a bit of an issue, like there's a bit of instability there, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, adding more demand, more load uh, to that situation is going to get you to, you know, it's going to expose that, uh, that being the weak link. So to add the, the sleeves, a lot of the times, like psychologically, you know, may help in terms of like feeling like you're just more stable. Like a thunder vest? Yeah, it's like yeah. a thunder vest for your knees. <laughs> I love that. I mean, I think the, the, the short and quick answer answer to this, uh, are they necessary, is, is no. It's definitely not necessary. And in fact, if you can power lift without any of the tools, uh, and that's wraps and sleeves and whatever their other belt. You know, belt and all those popular, I mean, you're better off. I mean, if you, if you can power lift and do well and perform and, 
it without any of those tools, you're going to be better off in real life uh, than if you have to use all those tools. Yeah. Now, there's some competitions in powerlifting yeah. that allow you to use you all these. You have to these. learn how to. Yeah, they l allow you to use all these accessories. And so if you can, and there's an advantage to using some of these, then you're okay. You're squatting 1,000 pounds, I'd probably suggest it. Right, right. Yeah. So there's, there's, def there's definitely an advantage to doing that, but... Uh, there's actually more benefits to you not if you don't have to. Yeah, I think if you compete and they allow knee wraps and a belt, uh, then you should train with them to learn how to use them because you can't just put them on the average person and expect them to lift more weight. There's a skill and technique and a, and a comfort and a feel that you get from using them. Um, so that's different. Now, if you now for the average person who's not going to actually go and compete in competitions and just wants to work out. I, here's why I don't like knee wraps, uh, or excuse me, not knee wraps, but it, definitely not knee wraps, but knee sleeves. I think it, it hides the issue, and I think it prevents people from solving the root issue. So if my knees kind of bother me, and then I put a wrap on, and ooh, they feel a little better, I haven't solved the problem. You're not really listening to your body's feedback. No, and I would even go as far as to say, if you don't solve the problem, and you allow yourself to train heavy because of knee uh, sleeves, then you're the, the risk of injury is even higher down the road because now I'm pushing through or maybe my body's not perceiving the pain the same because of this outside pressure signal and I can use more weight and now my my risk of injury later on becomes a bigger problem. Do you think more people use them uh, because they are trying to tamp down pain or do you think more use it because of the advantage it gives you for like the rebound effect? Well, knee, ra knee sleeves don't give you a ton. You've ever worn sleeves? Yeah, yeah. They're not a huge... They do, though. They do. Not really. I mean, what are you going to add? Two pounds? It's not like a wrap. Like, that's a different ball game. Actual sleeves are more like, what, they, what do they say? It warms your joints up, reduces pain, feels more comfortable. Sometimes you'll see bodybuilders wear them on their elbows, if you've ever seen them do that. Because yeah. it you know it feels... I think it's just not solving the cause. It allows you to push past pain. And there might be some value in that. Like I could see like a bodybuilder, they got the show coming up. Like I can't back off. I mean, I, I, I used them like playing around with them. I never used them consistently and uh, I didn't have pain. That's not why I put them on. I put them on because I felt uh, it, I had an advantage from coming, coming out of the hole. I mean, I, see, I get that from the compression pants too, but they're not compressing so much. Right. I think it's really the feedback. It mm -hmm. just feels tight. And so you, you don't have, get a whole lot of stored elastic energy. Yeah, yeah. that's not a ton, but I, I feel like that because, like the way Jordan was explaining it, how it communicates yeah. to the brain, your, your, your CNS probably allows you to perform a little bit better because of that outside you know, kind of signal. Yeah, interesting. But I mean, relying on it and not solving the, like if your back hurts if you don't wear a belt, so you always wear a belt, like you're setting yourself up for some problems, you might want to figure out why the hell your back hurts in the first place. And that's how I feel about sleeves like this. Now, if you use the sleeve as a way to allow you to move in a way that solves the root cause, then now the sleeves are being used, in my opinion, in a really good way. Yeah, I think it just it's become like a, a thing. You're you're a bodybuilder, you wear the weight belt around and you do it with tricep push downs yeah. and bicep curls and you do it the whole entire workout. You're a power lifter. You've got your knee sleeves either like part of the uniform, rolled yeah. up or you got them hanging down on your ankles until you go do your deadlifts or like that or your squats. It's just a, I think it's become an accessory as far as like, a, yeah. you know, apparel. I remember as, as a kid, uh, obviously bench press was the exercise. That's the one all the all the guys in high school talked about. How much could you bench? So it was all, it was all, all I focused on was how strong I could get in a bench press because that's what the bragging rights came from. And I remember at one point, my wrist started to bother me because I would use this thumbless grip, this kind of like suicide grip, they call it. And my wrists were bothering me. I'm like, oh man, what am I going to do? And then someone's like, put on, uh, you know, these wrist, uh, what were they? Wrist wraps, right? And they actually went around your wrist. They were for power lifters mm -hmm. and they're tight. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, my wrist didn't hurt anymore and I could bench more weight. Well, it never fixed the problem. Later on as an adult, I'm like, why do I'm wearing these? I don't want to wear these anymore. I took them off, wrist hurt again. I had to relearn technique and form. And then, of course, over time, I was able to lift as much as I could before. But that's the issue that I, I see with some of the stuff is they don't solve the problem. They throw the Band-Aid on. They continue to push their body. And then you start to get problems later on that are, are harder to solve or maybe take longer uh, to solve. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our guides. We have guides that can help you build muscle or burn body fat or even become a better personal trainer. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Salon. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Hey, look, if you like that whole episode, 
Click right here for shorter clips where we talk about specific topics. You'll love it. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed our content and you want more.